Esa timbra guza liandri Que prata timbra guza la mandri kosketa Praise God Praise the living God Is everybody healthy? Anybody unwell? Anybody unwell? Anybody unwell? Okay, praise God Praise the living God this is what the Lord has showed me. Cabrendo si mandre casita landre, y prato sa bandre catiza la desa cu. Racondrezi la mandre a tu shata. You've been asking questions, you've been thinking, and everything seems to be very close and yet not getting attached. And the Lord says, from this day forth, He takes over your mind and is going to teach you Himself takes over your mind and is going to teach you himself. I'll expound if I have to. But that is the word of the Lord by his spirit. Blessed be God. Praise God. Praise God. Today, our opening scripture, our scripture for the day, we always have a scripture every day for those who are active on a particular page. The word goes, blessed is she who believed. It's a past tense. She believed, she received the word. She received a word and she believed this word. And the word she received was unprecedented. It had never happened before. It was brand new. It was worthy of not believing. But this is the catch. When God speaks to you now, you do not believe him now. By the time he speaks to you, you already believed him. Altogether. By the time God gives you a word that tomorrow you will be A, B, C, D, this is a word you don't believe at that time. You believe that word because you believed God. That is clear, right? However unprecedented this thing is, even if it has never happened, especially when it has never been before. Because it's easy to believe a thing that God did for another person. But you're the first. It's going to be a virgin birth. It is impossible. Logic cannot receive this word. But you simply say, because it is God, I, I finished believing. Praise God. For there will be a fulfillment, a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. So, by the time a word comes to you, the Lord has already established that it is going to be fulfilled. But by faith, you take it as the word that was already fulfilled. Praise the living God. And this is her response. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. Praise God. If you're one that understands the presence of God, you know that the greatest thing you can do in His presence is to be silent. Because in, your, in His silence, He's speaking. Yes, we tell you, pray, pray, pray. But when the presence of God is, usually the easiest thing we can offer Him is tears in gratitude. Amen? Praise the living God. Today we're going to speak on, we're speaking on salvation. I think this is the third week. We talked about salvation in a particular way, we're not going to go back. We spoke about it in another way. And today we continue. I titled my message, The Weightier Matters. Salvation and the Holy Spirit. Our title is really Salvation and the Holy Spirit. But this is a matter that is weightier because judgment, love, faith, all pertain to the Holy Ghost. You can only believe because he has allowed you to believe. Because he has led you to believe. So your faith, yes, while it's the faith of Christ, while it is faith based on the word, while it is faith in God, if the Holy Ghost does not lead you, your faith will fail Amen? Praise the living God. So today I start. 
the Holy Spirit on you. I asked, I asked the Nabi, is the Holy Spirit in, uh, did I say bad people? In good people. Okay, is the Holy Ghost in good people? Obviously, yes. Now, is the Holy Spirit in bad people? And she's like, I don't remember what you said. Then I asked, are you good or are you bad? Her answers were obvious. And then I asked, do you have the capacity to be bad? And the answer is yes. And when you become bad, does the spirit of God leave? And the answer is no. So I ask again, is the Holy Ghost in bad people? The word is yes. Praise the living God. So how many good people have the Holy Ghost? How many bad people have the Holy Spirit? God in the Bible, several times, we talked about Jehu. He anointed Jehu to go and kill. He anointed Samson, the strongest man, to go and destroy the Philistines. Then you wonder, is God okay? I thought he's anointing us for good things, to do great things, great and mighty things that when people see you, they see God. But when people see you, they see evil. And she also thinks she's anointed. Yes, she's anointed to do evil. We'll go, we'll, we'll, we'll take it on, on from there. There are people who are anointed to do a particular work. And in your sight, it may be evil if you cannot discern the Holy Ghost. Not together. But this is no excuse for anybody to start doing bad things because you think you're anointed to do bad things. Amen? Praise God. So the question is, are you a good person? Today we are going to focus on the Holy Spirit in, and His ministry in Jesus. In effect, His ministry in you. One of the things the Holy Spirit does is He does not cause or attract attention to Himself. Is that true? The Holy Spirit is gentle, it's like a dove, right? He's not looking for attention. When you are anointed to do great and mighty things, the attention will come to you, right? And it is in humility that you will say, all the glory goes back to God. And I usually say, do not allow all the glory to go back to God. Because you yourself, you are the glory of God. We read the scripture to that effect. Without scripture, that would be a very, very blasphemous statement to make. Amen? Praise God. Now, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and these things you know, is so beautiful, and also there is a catch-22. Between the ministry of the Holy Spirit and madness, there is a very small difference. That's why you're going to find that many of the powerful servants of God who are very dramatic, they call them fake, because they have not tamed the spirit in them. The spirit in you is managed by you. Praise God. Once you're highly spiritual, you know what heresy is? You, you veer off true doctrine. Because your word happens. If I tell you anything, it happens. So I start to abuse the grace of God on my life. And stop listening to God. Stop outside the word of God. The Holy Spirit can be misleading. I'm saying these words because I understand what I'm saying. If you feel the power to do anything and you're not tamed by the scriptures, chances are you're going to be a heretic. Together. Praise the living God. Praise God. Amen. With the Holy Spirit, his job, his duty in the Bible is to magnify the Son. The Son of God, right? But here it is today. With the Holy Spirit, we can diminish Jesus. 
Are we clear? <laughs> For those who know the word, this is clear. Those who do not know, we need to expound on this. You've heard of, let us say, let us say, let, let me use Benny Hinn as an, as an example. He's one of our greater preachers, right? His ministry is mostly healing, right? But he's a great teacher. But with the healing gift, you can come and do healing for the next 50 years and it will work and you're, and you're not preaching Jesus. Now together, be it prophets, especially the prophetic. Many people love the prophetic. You are looking for every new prophet, every anointing you want. Yes, all that anointing will fit in you. But without the word, you're a wizard, a witch walking. Yes, do witch doctors not see the future? Do they not? The Bible calls them lying wonders. Being able to see in the supernatural does not mean you're a prophet. Being able to hear the word, the heart of God, makes you a prophet. Altogether, praise God. When a prophetic word is released into the spiritual atmosphere, anyone spiritual can pick it. There are those who have mastered their gift. There are those who are ordained, who are anointed by God specifically to be a prophet. They will obviously see. But remember the, the, the example of Agabus, the prophet, who told Paul, the owner of this belt, this garden, this is what is going to happen to him. Basically, was warning him more or less not to proceed in that journey or on that journey. And Paul said, have you said this to grieve me? Have you said this to hurt me, to cause me pain? I am willing to go forth into this danger. I am willing to die for the gospel. Altogether. So, when you find a man like Paul suffering for Christ, you, you, you it is easy. See, those guys are suffering because... They don't have Jesus. When persecutions come, many times, there's someone who sent me a resignation letter that Papa Mia have stopped serving God. It is not easy. And I told them, you send it to God. It is he that gave you this thing. It is not me. But you are the agent. I'm like, agents, leave me alone. We earn a commission. Leave me alone. Praise God. Praise the living God. So today, we're going to break down a few things as relates to our, our salvation. And many Christians, many anointed Christians, have failed to understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit and uh, heap burdens on followers on the floor. And yet the Holy Ghost came to relieve you of that burden or to take you through the burden. Even in the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they entered that fire, they did not get burned. But the ones that put them in the fire got burned. Altogether. So, do you know me? At one word, you're finished. Be very careful how you talk to me. Be careful how you handle me. Altogether. The greatest burden is money. Sign in fee to meet the man again. Sign in. Someone told me, Uncle B, it's because your ministry is still small. But when it grows, you will need money for building, money for this, money for that. And I said, uh, the same God who has sustained will sustain. But when that day comes, you come and warn me. That man of God, you have started going offside. Now together, praise the living God. I call it ecstasy. How many of you have ever been drunk? How many have ever been drunk? Put up your hand. The reason many have not put up because I didn't ask drunk what? You be drunk, but with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. So how many have ever been drunk? <laughs> the Bible it says scripture, be drunk by the Holy Spirit. When you're drunk, it's it's ecstatic. And we're saying today. Sometimes ministry, the ministry of the Holy Spirit can be ecstatic. It's like a man who is drunk, who has lost his way. And that indeed is true. Many born again, heavily anointed people have actually lost.
their way. And they're still hearing God. The anointing of the Holy Ghost upon you is to help you minister to his people. And that will work. Don't place a burden on them. But that same anointing must also be in your heart. If the anointing is not working in your heart, then you're in trouble. You will struggle with salvation. Praise the living God. Why? He is the only one that convicts the human heart. Praise the living God. Who was the Holy Ghost to Jesus? He was a companion. He was a helper. In every step. I can tell you the story. When Jesus, before he was born, who was there? It was said that uh, Mary was found with child of oh, the Holy Spirit. That is Matthew 1.18. You can give us the scripture. Make it clear for many. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So, from before his conception, prophecies had come. Then she conceived of the power of the Holy Spirit. We know that Jesus grew in spirit and in stature. The Spirit of God continued to grow him. Praise the living God. Uh, when Jesus was dying, he was there, right? But talking beginning and the end. But in between, how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, with power and the Holy Spirit. So, during his ministry, the Spirit of God was there. During his growth, the Spirit of God was there. He manifested great power that he did not have debates with demons. Where are you from? Who sent you? Praise the living God. It was not an interview. So many of us, we interview ourselves. Is God really there? Why is the thing happening to me? Shut it down by the Holy Ghost. Amen? I shared with the ministers, many of us, when we have a dream, this I'll keep repeating until you get it in your head. You have a dream, you wake up sweating, they have been chasing you, and you're also running. When they're almost getting you, you wake up. The first thing you don't even pray, first thing is man of God. I, I, I had this dream. You have the Spirit of God. You're at liberty, you're free. You are free. But man of God, they taught us that spirit of retrogression. I dreamt when I'm in high school. They're taking me behind. Just cancel it. That only happens if you're like Mary, who believed God at his word that she will have a virgin birth. If you believe God at first value, you never have to debate about these things. You never have to go for these delivery things that I hear four generations ago. Your uncle, he buried the head. The things have followed you. And now you've believed what human beings have told you. You've rejected what the word of God is saying, that you are free. But together, praise the living God. Praise God. Guess what? The Holy Spirit in the ministry of Jesus, even when Jesus left, he said, I will send you another comforter of the same kind. So he never really left. The Holy Spirit. Praise God. That is as relates to Jesus. There are many things. I'll, maybe I will share I could repeat them, I don't know. Here today, let's read the book of uh, Acts. We know the Holy Spirit helped the church, right? In the book of Acts. That is chapter 2. But give me chapter 1. I'm going to read chapter 1. In chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God came and helped the church. He expanded the church. He anointed the church. He anointed the ministers. Equip them for ministry. So ministry is not a choice. Those of you who want to minister, many times you come and say, Papa, I want to minister. And I tell you, which department do you want? Because for you, ministry is inside here. 
But for the apostles, ministry was not at the upper room. Ministry was outside there. Samaria and the other parts, other parts of the world. Renew your mind about what ministry is. Ministry is not being an usher here. Out together. And yet going out there, somebody, one of you, told me how you want to start street ministry. I'm like, yo, <laughs> are you anointed for it? And they said, yes. How do you know? Your heart will never rest. And when you go, you'll have successes. There may be resistance, but you will have success. And you'll be at peace, whether you're mocked, whether you're received. Praise God. And I pledge that when you begin, I will go with you. One, only, only once, not twice. Only once. <laughs> Praise God. The one thing I told God, God, as for me, I don't want the anointing for street ministry. I don't want it. And the more I say I don't want, the more I minister to everybody anywhere. So I'm like, hey, what? Then they... Have we understood? It's all by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise God. So, today, you are the church. But the early church was totally dependent, dependent on the Holy Ghost. They did not really have scripture like you. They had scrolls, but they were hidden, they were sacred, right? They were not easily accessible. And then they had the Pharisees who, were, who separated them. They were a certain class, a special spiritual class that looked at these as vagabonds, the likes of you. They didn't have access to the word, so they depended so much on the Holy Spirit. And thank God they didn't abuse the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you and I today would have nothing. We'll have no proof. The Bible says that we have not, we're not bringing to you a message that was crafted by men. Amen? We are giving you a message that we are eyewitnesses of. Praise the living God. And today, the only reason you are an eyewitness for Jesus is because of the Holy Spirit. Where did you meet Jesus? In your corridor. How come you believe him more than the seven? The seven in COVID time was always on TV, were hoping, saying no lockdown. And we believe. We always hoped in the word of the human being. And yet the word of God is readily available. Praise the living God. Acts chapter 1. Give me verse 1. I'm going to read up to I think verse 8. The former, the word is treatise or treatise, whatever it is. Let me use the word treatise to avoid mixing words. Have I meant all Theophilus of that of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. He was a worker by the Holy Spirit. We know the Bible says in Acts 10, I think, 38 somewhere, he went about doing good after he was anointed of the Holy Spirit and power. Verse 2. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, he through the Holy Ghost, he through the Holy Ghost, he through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. So even Jesus giving instructions, it was by the Spirit of God. And I've told some people here, somebody wanted a shortcut to grace. I said that one of the easier, easier shortcuts to grace is come and ask for an instruction. And yet others think the easier access to grace is bring a seed. You'll bring your seed, shall eat it and grow fat but you will stay the same. Somebody, that one is for the mature. Have we understood? In other words, let your heart go for God. Amen? Let your heart go for God. Next verse, okay. To whom also he showed himself alive after the passion by many infallible proofs, unchallengeable proofs with clear evidence, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. How many of you want to go to heaven? It's supposed to be obvious, right? 
We want to go to heaven. The Bible says, thy kingdom come. Heaven is supposed to come to you. But you, you want to go to heaven. It's in the Bible. It's in your Bible, not mine. It's in your Bible. Why the place you call heaven is supposed to come to you. Your will be done here as it is done there. You want to go there. Even Jesus ultimately will come back with you to reign on earth. Is that true? You want to go to heaven. Verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. He gave them an instruction. Do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says he, ye have heard of me. Next, five. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. Now, you, you've heard of the Baptists, right? These are guys in ministry, but they believe in this baptism of water. You cannot be part of them if you don't believe this way. And yet God is clearly telling you that others, that those who are baptized of the Holy Spirit. And it clears the question of, can you be born again if you have not been baptized by water? Certainly, yes. Can you be born again if you have not been baptized by the Holy Spirit? Definitely, no. So if you have not been baptized by water, remember it's not a crime to be baptized by water. It reminds you of the death and resurrection of Christ. And that is okay. If you want to find a swimming pool, go with anybody in here and get baptized. Tell you, baptize you in the name of Jesus. Chapter closed. So, but Uncle B. We don't do like praise the living God. When they, when they therefore will come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Now, they are speaking, then they thought it's about the earthly kingdom. But we leave that. Seven. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times of all, all the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. So Jesus honors God. Jesus is led of the Holy Spirit. Next. But ye shall receive, now we're talking about you, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses. One of the things the Spirit of God will do unto you, he will empower you to witness Christ to people. Both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, and the uttermost most parts of the earth. Praise God. Praise the living God. So today, do not dare to be a witness for God if you have no, not the Holy Spirit. You'll simply be a heretic. You'll go and teach false doctrine. You'll teach people to worship angels. You'll teach people to worship men of God. You'll teach people to worship created things. You'll teach people to worship Mary, to worship the moon, to worship the stars. I tell you this day, to worship dreams, especially you guys who are spiritual. You say, me, I'm a dreamer like Joseph. I repeat, Joseph had one dream twice, and he became the richest man in the world. You, you have dreamt every week, every week. But even you are it doesn't know you. This one doesn't pay that. Out together. So stop dreaming. Out together. Solomon had one dream twice. Became the wisest man, richest man. Again, we go back to UNBS. What do they do? You got a national bureau of what? Standards. There is no product that you're providing to be ascertained as good. So please stop dreaming. You have nothing to offer. Go for the Holy Ghost and then he will give you an idea of what to do. Are we together? I'm not abusing you. 
I'm teaching you to stop dreaming things they are chasing you. And praise God. Praise God. So clearly, I don't have to... The, the Holy Ghost revealed the church at the day of Pentecost. That's chapter 2, Acts. And then, what did he use? He used transforming fire. Cloven tongues. So the Spirit of God is the one that transforms you. So today, I ask the question, is the Holy Spirit in bad, bad people? Certainly, yes. Otherwise, there would be no need for transformation. What we call sanctification today. Now, together. So when someone is making mistakes, do not cast them aside. Maybe they are Paul who is murdering Christians and they're on the way to Damascus where they will meet the Christ himself. Now, together. Praise the living God. And then when you find today, God showed me something. That Bob, respect people. The person you undermine today could be the next, what's her name? This new minister, the lady. What's her name? Yeah, you find her choosing choir, you abuse her one day. She's honorable. They tell you, you can't remove your card, minister, but. Fortunate thing, at least you have a car. <laughs> we have understood each other. Respect people, especially people that are anointed, because their life cannot be measured. And the mistake many make is you think the pastor is the only anointed one. The anointed one is the one who has accepted Jesus. Amen? The pastor has an anointing for ministry. You have an anointing to be a minister. When the, the pastor needs a letter, you have a crusade in a certain district where they are refusing, the minister can make one phone call and the pastor will have to submit and say, thank you. Thank you. Are we together? But however, when the pastor submits, do not grow a big head. You are there because the pastor is saying, Father, remember them. But when the pastor tells you, do you remember where I got you from? Find another pastor. Are we together? That is to avoid Christians being downtrodden by men. And the Holy Ghost formed a community, right? In one day, three million people gathered and became one. They were born again. Praise God. So some of you have a product you're selling. Tell the Holy Ghost and he will give you three million clients in one day you'll have no capacity to even satisfy them. But you're busy looking for anointing. Out together. I've said it here many times. Start a business. We shall pray for you. We're not going to pray for you to start a business. We're going to pray for your business to prosper. So don't fear. Praise God. And proclamation of the gospel. Yes, it's the word of God. But it can be in your progress. As long as you're progressing, people will see your God. And you'll only progress by the Spirit of God. Amen? Praise God. Praise the living God. So, we're going to read scriptures. The Spirit forms your character. Give me 1 Corinthians 6, 7-11. I'm going to read quickly because the message of the Holy Ghost is supposed to be very easy and simple. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you because you go, ye go, ye go, ye go to the law, ye go to law and one with another. As in you are Christians and you are suing each other. Out together. You disagree on one or two things and then I sue you, you sue me, I win, I get Monday, I, you go to prison, whatever it is. And he's saying that, uh, why do you not rather take wrong, allow to be condemned, allow, allow to be persecuted for the sake of God? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? The word suffer is allow. Eight. Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and defraud, and that ye, and that you, and that your brethren. I think, okay, let's continue. I was going to change it to NIV. Know you not that the unrighteous 
shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Give me NIV. There's something I don't want to miss. In King James, to, to pass by. Do you not know, or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men. Those who do not see these things in the scriptures, they are actually there. Next. No thieves, no greedy, no drunkards, no slanderers, no swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not in heaven, it is here. And that is what some of you were. So the Lord is simply telling you, everyone, even bad people, what we deem to be bad, they still qualify to partake of grace. He's said that all the things he has mentioned, that, that is who you used to be. And he's saying today, but you were washed. You were sanctified. And you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by, and by the Spirit of our God. My target was by the Spirit of God. And we shared that to be justified simply means that everything you've ever done wrong, you're innocent. Everything you, you've ever done wrong and even will ever do wrong, you're innocent. I'm not encouraging someone to go and perform funny things. Are we clear? When you read the scripture, you can fear. But if you accept that by the Spirit of God you are free, then you are free indeed. And yield everything that could be wrong in your personal life to God. And believe me, God is faithful. Amen? Praise God. So here we're saying, the Spirit of God leads you into the will of God, and we have seen it. Give me John 14, 25 to 31. And this I have spoken while still with you. But the advocate... The Holy Ghost is the advocate in this case. An advocate, to advocate is to, it's an act of mercy. It's a word commonly used in the law, with the lawyers. They're the ones who represent you. Even to have one, it's really an act of mercy. You have an advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. So he comes in the place of Christ, will teach you teach you all things. So he teaches you not only one thing, he teaches you all things. And will remind you, also he reminds you, reminds you of everything that I have said to you. Praise the living God. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Once you have the spirit of God, you're safe. It does not matter the situation. You heard me say, I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I am going. Are you messing with me? Where are we? That I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Next verse. Did you skip a, a, a verse? Okay. 9. 29. Twenty-nine. I have told you now before, before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. So hold it there. Remember our scripture where the word of God came to Mary and she believed, right? She believed because she believed in God. You don't believe the word of God because the word of God is sweet. You believe the word of God because you believe in God who performs the word. Amen? And the same is here. So, whatever it is that God has told you, believe that word because you believe in him. Like, uh, like Sarah, she was given strength to conceive 
because she believed God, not because the word is very sweet. Praise God. 30. I will not say much more to you, for this, the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me. Hold it there. Many of you who are running in your dreams, because Jesus finished this work, it is peaceful for you. The devil had no hold on him, neither can he have hold on you. Why? You're in Christ. Christ is in you. You're in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in you. You're in God and God is in you. So where would the devil have access to you? Except through the ignorance of your mind. Except you've rejected the word of God. The devil has no access to you. But Papa, how? It is clear. One of the reasons, again, by the Holy Ghost, one of the reasons we struggle to believe the liberty of God is because of religion. They tell you, you need to fast three days, uh, pray for four days, uh, come to church for, I don't know, I need to see you every weekend. All that is nice to try and keep you in an atmosphere where maybe there is prayer, but we tend to worship the things we are told rather than the God that we must serve. Are we clear? Praise the living God. But he comes, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. Praise the living God. The Lord has not left you in his journey. And we have said that in his journey, the Holy Ghost was always at the forefront. Stop fearing Satan. As long as you believe the Holy Spirit, stop fearing the devil. Amen? I don't want to contaminate that word by adding anything to it. Praise the living God. We said the Spirit teaches you all truth, right? But he also leads you. If knowing the truth does not mean you're going to follow the truth. Is that clear? Knowing the truth does not mean you're going to follow the truth. Being a, let us say, being a lawyer does not mean you're going to practice law. Is that clear? Give me the scripture, John 16, 12 to 15. I'm only showing you scriptures you've already read, but we're going to read them anyway. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Now, one of the, the word is too heavy many times, but by the Spirit of God, he will continue to reveal his word to us. Now, together, I can give you a scenario. How foolish must you be to believe that a virgin can give back to a child? How, how foolish, surely. Let's go into a science, I don't know what they call it, laboratory, an arena for scientists who don't believe God and tell them a virgin can give birth. You'll be the most foolish person, right? But the Spirit of God reveals Christ, glorifies Him, and leads you in those paths so that you're free of contradiction. That's the same way God will tell you that you, you you're the mayor of this town. You're the one in charge of all the affairs of Kampala, the metropole. And yet in your history, you've never even been the class monitor. Now together. And why will you accept that word? Because you believe God. Amen? And that's a prophetic word to you. My words are not rehearsed. All together, yes, you I know you want to be a pastor, you want to do great things, and you're going to do them. But you're going to end up in politics also. And it's one of the things you don't like, right? Hey, you'll remember me. <laughs> I'll come to the, your office and sign for lunch. <laughs> Praise the living God. Where were we? However, when he, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. 
for he will not speak of his own authority. We said the Spirit of God does not draw attention to himself, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. If you find a servant of God who is always drawing you to themselves, be very careful. Yes, they are anointed, but anointing is corruptible. But together, I like prophecy when it's public. But the private one, I'll the room, that says the Lord, bring four million for your miracle. I've not said there's anything wrong with that. If that is how you believe, suffer. How together? Let all your giving be of free will. It's in the scripture, Second Corinthians chapter 9. Go and read the whole chapter. Free will, not by compulsion, not by necessity. Even if we are building a, a, a cathedral, I tell you, people give because we are building the house of God. The house of God is a human being. All together. But you do no wrong when you give toward the building of a sanctuary. You do no wrong as long as your heart has said yes. Is that clear? There are those who have been quarreling that how can Pastor Kakande ask for $300 per car? Have you given it? What is your problem? How together? If you don't want, don't do it. The ones who are willing, leave them alone. They're the ones who know maybe the Spirit of God has guided them. How together? Praise God. Praise the living God. I thank God the car which I want. <laughs> you cannot afford it yet. <laughs> so when the time comes, I'll tell you that God said, I met him in the corridor. He told me to tell you. <laughs> Praise the living God. He will glorify me. One of the things the Holy Ghost will do, will, he will glorify Jesus. Nothing else. For he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So everything you're receiving is spirit substance. The Holy Ghost is tangible. He can be felt. Praise the living God. Praise God. How together? He guides you, he teaches you, he sanctifies you, he justifies you, he leads you, he cleanses you, he protects you, even from yourself. You may I think the most dangerous being to you is yourself. Because confusion doesn't come from out, it comes from here. Amen? How many of you have had a board meeting in your head? Planning how this, to abuse someone, let's use the word abuse. You, 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 you're having a meeting, you're even taking minutes. This is how I'll start them. They're joking with me. And the Holy Ghost tells you, calm down. You're hurting yourself for no reason. Amen? And there's no human being who has not had that meeting. <laughs> Praise God. Give me John 3, 5 to 8. The Spirit of God regenerates you. This is a message you're going to have to listen to again, slowly, to continually get this thing. And there are messages that were taught prior that will make sense because of this, or this will make sense because of the other. Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say unto you, unless man is born of water and born of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Next. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So he regenerates you. Do not marvel that I say you must be born again. Verse 8. The wind blows where it wishes and you heard the sound of it. But cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. You become volatile. No one can predict you. No one can limit you. No one can subdue you. The more you squeeze, the more air escapes. Now together. So, you are a spirit. He that is joined to the spirit of God has become one spirit. And once you allow this information to marinate within you, to grow within you, then 
you'll have such authority that at a snap of the finger, things happen. Amen? I like demonstrating that one. I learned how to snap my fingers when I was about 12 years old. My little brother is Nano Toto. He was snapping and I felt, yee, but how come? I did not know the purpose. I learned, today I learned that because God can change your life just like that. Amen? Does anyone want a miracle right now? Now, I imagine, it's your first time seeing me, right? That is strange to you. These guys are used. I actually did that to bully you. <laughs> if you had, are you okay? Are you healthy? I already asked that question. Are you okay? Do you have any, let us say, discomfort in your being? You're not okay. Are you in pain? You're in pain? Yes. You see this? I snapped my finger. No, it's me being like this. Are you still in pain? You've understood me. Exactly. So it's that simple. And yet, you'd want me to take my time and talk to you. That says the Lord. Fire. Mulido. Out. No. I save time. We focus on the word. Healing is children's bread. And now that that is okay, other things are okay. I'm seeing three children. I don't know how many you have. Okay. Boy, girl. One of them is very light skin, right? Yes. Yeah. With my pengu. They don't have my pengu. Okay, I'm seeing one, a girl, when she's very little and very brown. So I'm, I'm now in your family. Very simple. We bless the Lord. Let's continue. If I start talking, we will not finish. Praise the living God. We have finished that. Give me Titus 3.5. This we share. The Bible reads, Now by the works of righteousness which we have done, not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by washing of regeneration and renewing by renewing of the Holy Spirit. So this is the information you must keep. Accept the word the way it is and you will never have to struggle. That there is a healing crusade coming. We, before we go, we organize and go. The, the man of God has come from America with oil, cooking oil. We are also here. Because you don't see me on TV, like, but yeah. <laughs> But we shall just do this and you will be fine. It takes an attitude of faith, not to allow things to pass you by. Praise the living God. So the Spirit of God regenerates us. And in this case, regeneration means recreating something, bringing something into existence, something that has never been. So your whole past being is destroyed, and he gives you his very own life. So you have to start thinking like a new being, a created being all together imagine right now okay when a child is in the stomach their source is different when they're out of the mother's belly their source is also different the same way once you receive the holy ghost your source has changed and anything you did yesterday you already justified you regenerated your new creation praise god and then he witnesses. The Spirit of God is an inner witness in you, and he's also a witness. We said he empowered the church to be witnesses unto the body of Christ. That is in uh, Acts 1, 8, 9. You go to Samaria, go to the other parts, uh, Judea, to the uttermost part of the world. But now there's the inner witness. I've said you can be anointed to serve people. And yet your heart is broken. So allow him to be an inner witness. I'm going to read you a scripture. Give me Romans 8.16. 
the scriptures we're sharing are very common to you. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. How can you be a child of God if you're flesh? So you are spirit. Amen? And you must tell your head to accept this information, just like Mary accepted that she's going to be a mother even when she was a virgin. Amen? God is a master at starting new things, starting unprecedented things. Praise the living God. And if the Spirit of God is a witness with you, how much more is he a witness of Jesus? Because his primary assignment is to glorify the Son of God. And that Son now lives in you. That's why you believe that you know Jesus. You believe you see Jesus. You see the Holy Spirit. You see God. And others say, the Bible says that when you see God, you die. That is true. That's the whole point of regeneration. If you meet God, then <laughs> you're brand new. You die. You baptized in him. And now you are brand new. Praise the living God. John 15, 6 says that he testifies of Jesus. That is just to highlight it to us. Well, let me read it. John 15, 26. But when the helper comes, the Holy Ghost, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. So he testifies of Jesus in your heart. That's why you're so bold in your resolve when talking about Jesus. You even cry. How many of you cry when you talk of your father, your natural father? That you people, my father, is good. <laughs> you people, you can't believe. He took me to school. And yet Jesus will never pay your school fees. You talk and you cry. Because you have an inner witness. Amen? Praise the living God. And that inner witness translates you into the very image of Christ. So you become Christ-like. I'm avoiding to say you become Jesus. But even if I said that, I've not said anything wrong. Praise the living God. Then one thing, as it testifies in your heart and reveals Christ to you, these miracles you see happening, that is a testimony of Jesus. Because no man can do these things except God be with them. That is John chapter 3 verse 2. Amen? Praise God. What does the Holy Spirit do? Jo Rob uh, this one we know. Romans 2, Romans 8, 28. But we'll start from 26 to 20. What does he do? Not 28, 26, 27. And then 34. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. The Spirit helps your weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we should, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. First, we ask the question, can the Spirit of God be in a bad person? And I said, yes. This scripture also highlights it to you, right? He helps your weakness. Leave it there. Take me back to 26. The primary thing that I want us to see is that he even prays for you. But remember, he lives in you. And those utterances come out sometimes as groanings, as things that cannot be said. That board meeting you used to have of how to abuse your cousin, your sister, you're now having board meetings of the mercy of God, the grace of God. All together. And once it is established, you no longer have to have the meeting. The days I used to, in my head, I'm like, but God, how do people heal? How do they prophesy? How do they teach? For me, it, it, 
I don't even have what to teach. I don't even know what to say. Uh, my, my English is limited. And then now here, I'm in Uganda. Some people prefer Uganda. Someone warned me. Uh, what is ministry in Uganda? <laughs> the one has refused. Njiri. If you Njiri, take a Uganda. That's when you will manage. I said, eh? If it is like that, let me learn artist. Praise God. There is no formula to it. All you have to do is have the Holy, Holy Spirit. He will guide you in what to say on how to go about it. Praise God. But he is your intercessor. I know someone who left the church because the man of God did not announce them or pray for them when they are going to do exams. He prayed, I think, you know church likes kids. They pray for kids who are going to PLE, I think, Olivo, Olivo. They forgot to pray for campuses. She left the church. And this is a true story. And there's a witness inside here. And I'm like, now, this one. Praise the living God. 27. Now, he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. That's the Holy Ghost, right? But when he's searching and finds, you have access to these things. God said about Abraham, will I hide the thing which I will do from Abraham? Will, will, God is challenged, he's having a board meeting on his own. I cannot hide this thing from this man. Now you, you're here dreaming, running. Ooh, I'm running there, yeah, they, they're chasing me. Spirit of this, spirit of that. Pass that home. <laughs> Go for deliverance. <laughs> Be delivered through knowledge. Amen? Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Many of you, if you do not know the will of God, simply speak with the spirit of God. How do you talk with the Holy Ghost? You only speak to him by faith. But the good thing is tangible. It's tangible. It was a tangible pain in your body, right? And the spirit removed it. Then you say, Has, have you ever been touched by the Holy Spirit? You wonder, but how? If he's able to remove something from you, meaning he touched you, right? So by faith you accept that he is tangible, he's present, he's now. Praise God. Give me verse 34. Who is it that condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God. Who also makes intercession for us. We would like to separate Jesus from the Holy Spirit but they are one and the same. I will send you another comforter of the same kind. Alos Parakletos. That is the Greek. Of the same kind. He is one and the same. So today be confident in the blood that interceded for you, atoned for you. Be confident in his spirit that is sent to you. Be confident in the word, which is the person of Jesus. Be confident in your God, who will never leave nor forsake you. Praise God. If you know the spirit of God, you will never worry about anything. The spirit of God sets you apart. For holy living. He intercedes for you. He intercedes for you. He's a present help in time of need. He cleanses you. This we have already shared. He empowers you. Then there is this. There are people who don't like to be around people. You know that, right? I'm one of them. You'd wonder, but ye guy you with us. Yes, by the Spirit of God. I don't like people. <laughs> In quotes, not that I don't, don't think, hey, is that why you didn't talk to me the other day? No, not like that. I just don't like people are always speaking vile. Poison, right? My mind wants to be Christ-like. And you taking me behind, I'm like, no. I'm like the guys of Kiseka. That the Muzino, Chapter closed. 
come and understood me. As manage the meetings in your head. Auntie so and so said, the other one said, did you hear what they said about you? Uh-huh. Before you know it, they have taken you. Avoid looking for rumors and funny things said about you. You already know who you are. Especially by the Holy Ghost. Now like me, you can't convince me that I'm anything. Rango B, you, you know you're a man of God. No. Uncle B, you, you, you. The people have tried to convince me that I'm an apostle. Now let me bring it the other way. We know you know our daily devotion. It's big one go, right? Papa, that I cannot be for you. It's too small. Are you God? So can we call you apostle and you be bigger than any God? Is it about titles? It's about grace. And I did, I did that deliberately, by the to teach someone a lesson. I needed somebody to learn something. But I didn't. Because it's about lifting yourself above yourself. Praise the living God. Give me Acts 13, 1, 2. Here we're talking about the corporate anointing. That in the midst of God brings us together for a reason, but he can isolate one or two people for a greater purpose. And once those people are established, does not mean the rest of you are, are left behind. That person will scale greater heights, and that height will draw you also. Now, in the church, that was at Antioch. There were certain prophets and teachers. These are people you never know. Maybe nothing is even written about them. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called, was called, I don't know, Niger, Niger, I don't know. Lucius of Cyrene, Manain, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul, our Saul, the one we know, too. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, so the Spirit speaks. The Holy Ghost speaks. Those who have never heard God, I refuse that today. Let God speak to each and every one of you in Christ Jesus. Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Now by the time they are saying separate these people, God has already established the work. He has already established the plan, the pattern, the journey, the trials, the, the overcoming, the everything, revelation. The Bible says to Paul was committed mysteries which were not even committed to Jesus. So by the time, right now we say God has separated you for this, you're like, hey, I received the word, you're happy. This thing was established before you were born. But it took your discipline to be in this congregation where the spirit, the presence of God would be and he will establish you. Amen? I used to struggle with boldness in teaching the word, not boldness in other things. <laughs> in other things, I, I used to be very violent. And I'm like, but God, these people I'm going to teach, they have more experience than me, they have more knowledge than me, they have more everything than me. Even when they arrive, they can't they park, you just fear, look at the tires alone, you know that these tires can buy my car. So God, how am I going to handle these people? And he said, uh, boss, just go. I'll be with you. Today, the problem that we have in this church is time management. They always tell me, why are you over teaching? <laughs> over teaching what? The word of God. At least I'm not teaching about my village. There's nothing there. <laughs> Praise the living God. And that can be the same as you. You could think you don't qualify. But once God has called you, he says there is work which he has already called you to do. The work is ready waiting for you. And for some reason, I wonder why God does this. Instead of picking another person who qualifies, he has still insisted on you. And you're not qualified, you're not ready. He says, I will wait. You say, God, may I want to first have my degree and my master's. He will wait. Until you finish. Remember Moses and Aaron? This God, me, I can't talk. Me, I'm this. I'm like, hey, you think I don't know Aaron? Your brother speaks better than you. 
and well, okay, he's coming, he's going to be the one to speak for you, but you will be a God to him, and he will be your God. And I'm like, yo, how together? Imagine God one time telling you, in those dreams when you're running, stop running, you're a God. Will you turn back? <laughs> or you will be like, uh, I think that was, uh, I was just, that is a, a fleshly dream. Your spirit, there's no more flesh. Praise God. The spirit came to com convict men of sin. A man that needs to be convicted of sin is a man that does not qualify. Is that true? And I tell you that the time, the day you stop feeling the convictions of God is the day you are finished. That is John 16, 7 and to 9. How many of you feel very, very bad when you've made a mistake? You feel bad not against the person on your part, but against God. I want to witness it. That simply means the Holy Spirit is with you. And yet for you at that point is when you feel you're very far from God, right? So today renew your mind. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Next. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. The word judgment, you can go into Greek and find it, but judgment can mean discernment. Altogether, you'll be able to judge rightly, to understand rightly, and then he'll convict you of righteousness. You know you're righteous. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, right? And because of that righteousness, you feel so much pain when you're veering off. And everywhere you go, however far into the darkness you go, the light of Christ will continue to shine. Now together, the Bible says that even if you make your bed in hell, I am with you. And some of you are fearing to go to hell. God is there. <laughs> are we understanding each other? We're only giving you the confidence that there is nothing in any way that can separate you from the love of God. And this is the scripture. Not my opinion. The weight of God's glory can break you. Because he's drawing you to himself. It, it is men of God, real servants of God, people are serving God. They have been through a lot. You will never know. You will never know. Remember Abraham? The man is looking for the promised son. God is talking to him live. He gave him great and mighty promises. He even promised for his children's children and children and children plus plus. But the man's wife is barren. And she looks at him like, nah, say, ah, ah. <laughs> This thing of God. Okay, let's wait and see. And God said, I'll surely cause it to come to pass. That's all you must believe. Don't believe the thing. Believe the author of the thing. Do not believe in created things. Believe in the creator. And all shall be well. Miracles. You don't come to church with the miracle that today I'm going to do three miracles. No. You just come to church. And God is done to lead you. Prophecy. Many of you think teaching is maybe people teach because they are very good orators. No. I teach because God leads me. I already have next Sunday's message. He gave me the title last night. How to get? So, I'll come and tell you things which seem to be my opinion. No. But after service is when someone will tell you that was my word. And that's it. The days I teach and I feel like, ah, the way these guys are looking at me, mm -hmm, it's not working. Then someone tells you, Papa, I swear God sent you to me. You are this, you are like, hey, okay, I'm the one. But inside you know why. Wow. <laughs> Have we understood each other? It's not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit. Praise God. Praise God. The character of the Spirit in you. What's the definition of sin? Let me give you another definition. The definition of sin is simply turning away from God. 
That is clear, right? Not really. Let me use the perfect word. Turning away from Jesus. Rejecting Jesus is blasphemy. Out together. Jesus talks of, in context, he talks of, uh, you, can, you can blaspheme the son, you can blaspheme him and this and that and that, but the Holy Spirit, you're in danger of eternal damnation, right? And yet, the Holy Spirit is exactly Jesus and his works. So if you reject the works of Christ, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Amen? So do not be deceived. Blasphemy is rejecting salvation. That is to answer very many people because that's something we don't understand easily. Praise God. I was telling you that uh, the character of the Spirit is the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22, I'm not going to read. Go and read it. Love, patience, kindness, faith, you name it, long suffering. In your board meeting, let these things be there and then you will have peace. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. 23, gentleness, self-control. Against that, there is no law. No one can sue you for, for being nice. Amen? And guess what? The one who benefits the most from this is you, not the people who you're extending love to. When you're being kind to someone, it is you that enjoys that peace, right? And thus, manifesting the Holy Spirit. It is not a miracle that... <laughs> These are greater than miracles, in my view. Praise God. We've heard of the seven spirits of God, right? In Revelation, the book of Revelation. Find me that scripture. I, I think it's in chapter 5. Revelation, I think it's chapter 5. 5. Find me the scripture. You're searching, right? Okay. Forgive me. I know the scripture, but it has refused to come. But we shall go to Isaiah, Isaiah 11. But I want us to pass with the one of Revelation. If it's delaying, first give me Isaiah 11. First one. Okay, fine. 5, 6. And, behold, and I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Now together. But I'm going to help you understand this quicker. That the seven spirits of God are actually the Holy Spirit. Just divided in different manifestations. That's why some men of God will tell you, instead of saying the seven spirits of God, they will use words like uh, the roles of the Spirit. All together. Like your ear, your mouth, your nose, your eyes, it's still the same person. But they have different functions. Okay, give me Isaiah. Isaiah 11. I just want to pick one or two things. I think I already said it though. There shall come forth the rod of the stem of Jesse and branch and grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord one. The spirit of the Lord is the spirit of prophecy. All together. Shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom two. And understanding three. No. And understanding and the spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. We taught about wisdom, three kinds of wisdom. We taught about three kinds of knowledge. Uh, and all those, you must have understanding. All together. Then counsel, the helper, the advocate, the Holy Ghost. Uh, spirit of knowledge, you just know. Apart from the other gifts. This, you can call this the gifts of the spirit. All together. Forget the, the gifts of the Spirit in, in Corinthians and Romans. And then the one of the fear of the Lord, the one that David had. Remember, David was the most stubborn guy, I keep saying, and yet he had the fear of the Lord. 
And the Lord said that this one I've chosen because he will do all my will. So you can be stubborn and yet you're doing all the will of God. The Spirit of God will continually cleanse you and restore you into true fellowship with God. And then uh, wisdom, we go to Solomon, we go to Daniel, we go to Joseph. This one is usually with dreamers. People who dream are usually wise. Wisdom is not your cleverness. Wisdom is an idea God will give you and it will change the whole world. Uh, together. He can give you, we shared this in Exodus, I think, 30. Is it 30 or Genesis 30, 31? Where he committed to Genesis, committed to the tribe of Dan, wisdom in craft skills. The people who just know how to make things. Me, however anointed I am, you tell me to draw. You call it still drawing, just a, a leaf. You will know that I don't have that anointing. Another anointing I'm sure I don't have is done for dancing. Even if you bring the best musician, I will look at you. And if you try to challenge me, I'll start prophesying. <laughs> That's when you will leave me alone. Praise God. The spirit shall rest upon him. Spirit of wisdom, understanding, spirit of counsel. The one that I want is might. You know, we all have power. You know, power is power. We're going to use the example of Samson. The man had so much power. And he had no leader. He was in charge of himself, right? He did what he wanted. He entered enemy territory alone. He destroyed armies alone with the jawbone. He got foxes, tied their tails, a thousand of them, and lit, put them on fire alone. Alone. One man like this. And God anointed his head, right? And this man, what brought him down? A thigh. Just the thigh. With all that power. Praise God. I learned that God anointed, that someone, a man of God, I learned from, he said that uh, God was clever not to anoint his eyes. Because remember, they removed the eyes, right? So there would be, the anointing would be gone. He anointed his hair because the hair would continue growing. That's how he was restored, right? Whatever God gives you is permanent. And if you find a servant of God who has no leader, who has no place of submission, be careful. There are those who submit because it is stylish. Now together, even you, you need submission. Some say, ah, God is my spiritual father. You are very stupid. God is in a man. Now together, God is in a pastor. And he sends, the Bible says, I will send you pastors who will teach you in knowledge and understanding. And we're not teaching you anything that we know. Now together, I'm a former accountant. I'll be teaching you debit and credit. But trust me, in this very room, there are real accountants. So when, when now they're, they're picking accountants, I will also not qualify. I'll be like, ah, you take the other ones. Even preachers, there are teachers here that if we stood up, I would not qualify to be the teacher. Not together. But God has chosen me. And that's all I need. That's, there's a song. It's a privilege to be anointed. So don't use that anointing to undermine people. Because those people are also on assignment. There are people who are anointed to take care of the servant of God. And now, me, I see, I say, you, well, <laughs> you, 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 what do you know? And yet, your, your, your service to God is to serve me. There are many of you, if I send you a minister, say, from TMS, you look at them up, down, and be like, ah, me, I want Papa. Immediately, you've been disqualified. That person is not, is not working under me. He's working under God. Submitted to me. They are submitted. Submission. They also have a mission which is under my mission. But their mission is independent. How to get So take your submissions very seriously. Praise the living God.
Earlier on, we were talking about Jesus and uh, how the Spirit of God was with him everywhere. I'm going to just read, not scriptures this time, I'm going to highlight, mention and highlight the scripture. At his conception, at his birth, that is Matthew 1, 18 and Luke 1, 34 to 38. Why am I reading? In case you're going to listen to this teaching, you will be able to open the scripture. Now together. At his baptism, that is Luke 3, 22. The spirit of God came like a dove, right? In his ministry, Luke 4, 1. Jesus was led of the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. He was led. So are you in ministry because it is fashionable? All together, the same chapter, Luke 4, 14, the Bible says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. You want to be a celeb? You want to be a celeb, become a pastor. But that's where, where Satan will find you, if you're not called. All together, praise God. Even Acts 10, 37, 38. This is where the Lord anointed Jesus. God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. So you cannot be in ministry if you're not sanctioned. Praise God. Then the Spirit empowered Jesus. Matthew chapter 12, 28. Matthew 12, 28. This is when he's dealing with demons and all that. The, at the arrival of Jesus, demons just ran, Jesus, son of the most high God, what do I have to do with you? Have you come to torment me before my time? He did not look for, we have understood each other. His business was to serve God. When he encountered the devil, it announced itself and had to leave. In other words, don't pay too, too much attention, devils. But cast them out. Right? Remember Jesus, it was said that Jesus uses bells about to cast out devils. All those are persecutions which are part of it. But are you moved with that? As long as you have the spirit of God. You will not be moved. You're like a tree planted by rivers, nourished in and out of season. Your fruit shall have seed in itself. Your leaf shall remain green. Praise God. Praise the living God. Then uh, we said the Spirit of God testifies of Jesus. Matthew 12, 31, 32. Blasphemy is rejecting Jesus. Don't forget that. How many of you have seen a man of God perform a strange miracle and in your heart you're like, nah, yeah, ah, you have sussed it. I learned that one from the Lord. But this one, is it really, really, really real? Altogether, I'm a man of God. I've seen great miracles, but I've seen men of God perform miracles and I'm like, but what? Is this real? Altogether. There are men of God who announce that today there are going to be miracles of this kind. Meaning they already know the people are in the congregation by the prophetic spirit. And they speak and these are impossible miracles. And they happen. Now you, because you're used to healing only headache, you say, ah, ah, that one is using a certain spirit. I've seen it in our Uganda. I don't even fear to say it. There are many first pastors who are against Pastor Kakande. Because they cannot do what he does. And if you're here and you fear Pastor Kakande, it's okay. Continue fear. I'm not his spiritual son, but I know he's the servant of God. There are some of you, if I tell you now, you go there, there. It's called Kupiria. You even want to pass the side of Makerebe, don't want to pass me and there, because you think there is a snake. That is your problem, not mine. Those things you can only understand when they start happening to you. I used to fear Pastor Kakande. I keep saying this to help somebody. I used to fear him, not necessarily because of any story, but for strength the way he does his miracles. I'd never experienced that until I became who I am. When I'm like, oh, okay. When I became who I am, he's my witness. A certain pastor said uh, I go to the lake. I drink blood. I slaughter people. So all of you are potential victims. Out together. But you will hear the word of God and you will know, you'll be able to tell if really 
I'm of God or not. Amen? And if I'm not of God, okay, that's not even possible. The Bible says that, that I mean, what is it to you when a man falls or when he excels? It is God who, who, who lifts him up. Paul, Paul is our is here example. Praise God. And again, the Spirit of God was at the death of Jesus. Hebrews 9, 13. This one we are going to read. Hebrews 9, 13 and 14. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the, the ashes of, hay, of a heifer sprinkling, of an, sprinkling the unclean sanctified, sanctifies for the purifying of flesh. 13, next verse. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit, eternal spirit, everlasting spirit, offered himself without spot to God, cleans your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. One of the greater challenges we have is this one. And I thank God for the word God gave you. Once God anoints your head, no one can challenge you. Not the skull here, the brain. <laughs> All together, there are people with anointed brains. You've seen people who are very good at math in school, right? And very bad in English. That was my consolation that at least I can win you in English. <laughs> Guys who are good at math, it can only be a gift. All together. Praise God. When we're in school, my God, you know you can feel for you. For me, what is wrong with me? The teacher is the same. Even when they put a reward and you try and read, you will never get the marks of the other guy. For him, it's a gift. Like love, you can't pretend to love. Submission, you can't pretend. It will expose you at point X. Like a mother's love. Even when you're a father, you can't have a mother's love. Yes, you love, but a mother's love is a mother's love. It can only be a gift. And a mother is equated to the Holy Ghost. In quotes. You might say, because you're a mother, you have the Holy Spirit. No. <laughs> no, not like that. Praise God. At his death, at his resurrection, Romans 8, 11, the Bible says, but if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also give life to your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. So, the Holy Spirit was always there. Always there. And will always be there. He is tangible. He is present. He will never leave nor forsake you. He is faithful above all things. I do not care how bad the situation seems. He remains tangible. He remains divine. And guess what? One beautiful thing about the Holy Ghost is that he is emotional. He gets to feel what you feel. You know these spiritual gifts that we have? I get to feel what you're feeling. It's not me feeling. It's the Holy Ghost feeling through the gift in me. And those who do not believe that, let's use uh, Ephesians 4.30. And grieve not the, the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Praise God. Anybody that can feel grief is one that is emotional, right? So when you're emotional, take it to him. He will fill with you. After all, you're now one spirit. Praise the living God. Praise God. And that's Holy Ghost that we know is the same names in, uh, I believe, Isaiah 9, chapter 9, where Jesus is, there will be a son shall be given, the government shall be on his shoulder, and he will be called a counselor, he will be called this, called that, called that. Those are the same names of the Spirit. He's a comforter, a counselor, a baptizer, advocate, strengthener, a sanctifier. He's the Spirit of Christ. That is him. Praise the living God. How many of you Believe they lack the Holy Ghost. Put up your hand. 
if you think you do not have the Holy Spirit. Okay, how many of you believe they do not have power? Spirit of power. Put up your hand. I'm going to give you. I'm asking. I'm not distributing. It's not for free. Okay, the word for free is not even correct. When we are young, we say it's not for free. As in, it's not for nothing. I'm not speaking for nothing. How many of you desire to have spiritual power? We'll go back to the scripture. Give me Acts chapter 10, verse 28. Acts chapter 10, verse 28. No. What is the scripture? How God anointed 2038. Yes, thank you. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. If you have the Holy Ghost, you must also have power. Usually, it's supposed to be by default that once you have the Spirit of God, you have power. But many of you, you want me to first tell you receive power, then you'll accept that you have power. Once you have the Spirit of God, you actually do have power. But if you want me to say it so that it's on record that I received power. That when you go on the street and the highways and the byways, you go as the power of God. I can do that for you. Praise God. This is the word of the Lord. 